Hello, in today's episode of Bug Bounty Reports Explained, you will learn how William Bowling achieved a remote code execution on GitLab by exploiting a zero day in image processing library called Exif tool. He was rewarded the maximum reward for GitLab Bug Bounty program, which is $20,000. Link to the report, his write up, and his Twitter profile are in the description. Enjoy! First, a quick mention about the newsletter. I'm planning to do a premium version when there is much more content than in the regular one. It's not only links, but mostly tips and summaries of long articles. This time I sent the premium version to everyone for free and the feedback was really great. Normally you can't get past issues, but this one you can get from mailing.bugbountyexplained.com slash six. Let's begin the explanation of this amazing bug. Apart from the content, image files can also have metadata. Those are additional information about the file. For example, there can be a tag with the author of the file, the software use, the date created, and so on. And there is no problem with creating a metadata with arbitrary tags, but some services just don't accept them. GitLab had a whitelist of tags that were allowed and any other ones were removed. For that task, Exif tool was used. It's a popular library to work with files metadata. And when uploading image files, GitLab workhorse only accepted JPG, JPEG and TIFF extensions in the file name. However, the problem with Exif tool is that it doesn't use the file name to determine the type of the file. It looks at the file content. Usually, first bytes of the file allow identifying the type. And among others, Deja Vu format was accepted by Exif tool. It seems like this format is rarely used nowadays. It was advertised as better than PDF for compressing scanned documents, but it apparently lost that battle. And metadata in Deja Vu file format looks like this. You have brackets with metadata word and then each tag and value is in separate bracket nested inside those outer ones. Importantly, the value of the tag is inside double quotes. And as in most programming languages, when you want to have a double quote inside the string, you escape it using a backslash. Let's now take a look at how those quotes were handled by Exif tool. This is the code responsible for that. And don't worry if you don't understand Perl yet. I didn't either and even the bug hunter wasn't familiar with it before finding this bug. So the code parsed the metadata character by character. If the double quote was encountered, we got inside this block. Its task was to one, find the closing double quote and cut out the rest, handle all escaped double quotes inside, protect unescaped dollars and add signs, and convert all C escape sequences like backslash N for a new line or backslash T for a tab. For this last task, they used eval function. It allows executing Perl code. Our value from the metadata was only put there in a string, so only those escape sequences were evaluated. In order to inject Perl code, we would have to escape those double quotes. Let's take a look how this code worked in more details. First, it would encounter a double quote in the file. It would be the opening one. Second, it would find the next double quote and cut out the rest. Then the value between those double quotes would be evaluated. There are no problems here, but let's take a look how this code handles situations with escaped quotes inside the value. First, as previously, it would find an opening double quote. Then it would find the next double quote and cut out everything after that. But this would be the escaped quote. There is a regex to deal with this situation. It means one or more backslash at the end of the string. The dollar in regular expressions means the end of the string. This one checks if the processed part ends with the unescaped backslash. The next character after is the double quote. 
So if there's a backslash at the end, it means that the double quote is escaped. The number of those backslashes must be odd, for example, one or three, because if the number would be even, for example, two backslashes, it would mean that it's the backslash escaped by another one and not the quote that is escaped. Then it finds another quote and repeats the process indefinitely until it finds an unescaped quote, which means that the string is closed and it can be evaluated. So it all looks good so far. Until you realize that I made a critical mistake a few sentences ago. I told you that the dollar in regular expressions means the end of the string. But the truth is that it matches the end of the string or the new line at the end of the string. So if your value would have backslash new line and double quote at the end, this regex would match this. Then this code would think that it found an escaped quote, but the truth is that it's an escaped new line character. This allows you to break out of string context and inject your own comments. Let's see how this could be done on the example of reverse shell exploit. This is the command that we want to inject. QX function in Perl allows executing operating system commands. If you would just put this inside this eval call, it wouldn't work. The QQ function works just like a double quote, so here we evaluate a string and not a Perl code. I know this can be confusing at first, make sure you really understand this one. Normally, the eval function takes the Perl code to execute as a string. But programmers don't want to execute the Perl code here, only the string. So that's why we have a string inside another string. To inject our Perl code, we must escape those double quotes that are added at the beginning and at the end. For this, we will use the sequence of the backslash new line and a double quote. Then this vulnerable code will find this and it will think that it's an escaped double quote instead of the escaped new line. Thanks to that, the double quote will stay in its place, closing the first double quote. Next, we will use a dot to concatenate the string. Then we are pretty much home. At this point, we can inject a QX function that will execute arbitrary commands. Here is the payload that gave the hunter reverse shell on the GitLab server. At the end of the payload, we repeat the operation by adding another dot and another sequence of backslash new line and a double quote. So GitLab was not at fault here. It was a zero day in Exif2 library. GitLab had a policy of awarding 50% bounties for vulnerabilities found in third party software. But thanks to this report and others by William, they rolled back that policy and paid him out full $20,000 of reward. To fix that, Exif tool no longer uses this eval call to escape those C sequences. And that's it for today's vulnerability. If you liked it, also watch another bug from William covered on my channel, 25k RCE on GitHub by uploading a malicious YAML file. Also, remember to sign up for the newsletter to receive the next premium issue for free. For now, thank you for watching and goodbye.